Recru recruiting and retention of law enforcement officers has become a daunting challenge to police departments nationwide. Since 2020, a mass exodus of officers and record lows in new recruits have resulted in critical staffing shortages. CBN's Caitlin Burke takes a look at what's being done to fill the void. Here in Baltimore, Maryland, the police department lost nearly 300 officers in 2022 alone. Now at unsustainable staffing levels, the city's police union warns their forces are simply stretched too thin to keep the public safe. Ranked as one of the cities with the highest homicide rates, concerned citizens are urging officials to do something. Why do we keep losing kids? Why we don't have enough police staff? Obviously we heard this here. We have, we do have a net loss. We don't have a community that wraps around. In a recent statement, Mike Mancuso, president of the Baltimore City Police Union, warned the department will only continue hemorrhaging officers if the city doesn't improve working conditions and drastically increase pay. And Baltimore isn't alone. We are at a point now where almost every large and mid-sized police department um, is having difficulty recruiting new police officers to the profession. It's a crisis because police officers are leaving their agencies uh, in record numbers and we've got to replace those officers and it's getting more and more difficult to do so. In Seattle, fewer detectives are available to investigate sexual assault cases. Massachusetts State Police had to move troopers normally investigating homicides to street patrol and in Kansas City, vacancies are causing record long wait times for 911 callers. I always wanted to be a cop. I always wanted to join the military. Um, you have to be 21 to become a cop. So I just started out, went to the Army for five years, and then I just kind of had like a seamless transition right into the, um, into the police academy. And then <laughs> did that for six years. Now, 32-year-old Josh Blackford is walking away from what he once considered a dream job, determining the risk unworthy of the reward. I just got my W-2 in the mail uh, the other day for last year. I worked the whole year. I, I quit January 4th of this year. Um, and my box one is $49,000 after being a cop for six years. And that is just... I, it, that alone 100% solidified my decision to leave. Low pay isn't the only reason behind this mass exodus. Cops leaving the force have cited burnout, low morale, and decreasing support from state and local leaders as deciding factors. Instances of excessive force cases, like in the recent death of Tyree Nichols, also continue to haunt departments. People are mad at you. Your administration uh, very often doesn't support you. You turn on the TV news and you hear that your profession is a bunch of racist jerks. And then you're working 12, 14, 16 hours, uh, six to seven days a week, seeing the most horrific things that society has to offer day after day after day. National Police Association spokesperson Betsy Brantner Smith says departments are working to regain public trust through an increased focus on training and transparency. American law enforcement is always looking to improve. And that's one of the things that we're seeing now. Over the past two years, we've been working hard to launch a body-worn camera program. The Aurora, Colorado Police Department uses state-of-the-art technology to ensure transparency and accountability, making sure to inform the community about new developments in their policing through social media platforms. Body-worn cameras provide transparent, secure evidence and help to keep our communities safer. To build trust, people have to know what you're doing, why you do what you do. And sometimes we haven't historically been very good about offering those explanations. As departments seek to win back the public and retain veteran officers, they're also getting creative to woo new recruits. Are you looking for a new job? Are you ready to try something new that'll make a difference in doing something really great? Well, come join us here at the Fort Worth Police Department. We're hiring. From catchy videos to signing bonuses in the tens of thousands, departments are desperate to fill vacancies. The Virginia Beach Police Department deployed both of those strategies, along with streamlining their hiring process. That helped close the gap from 100 plus vacancies to just over 30. They wanted to serve their community. Um, that was the, the biggest uh, reason for 
the the new class, the the recruits entering into law enforcement. They really want to reach out to their community and be a positive change in that community. Aurora PD took their recruiting efforts on the road, targeting locations with more diverse workforces. Their first stop, New York City. Historically underpaid, uh, you know, not a great work environment, uh, commute times extremely long. So a lot of things that we can improve on if somebody made the decision to leave that organization and come here. They struck gold with three former NYPD officers now preparing to start work out west. We've recently traveled to Atlanta. Uh, we've traveled uh, to Albuquerque. Uh, so we're really looking at, you know, where can we target and offer a better quality of life? In the past, departments saw lines of interested candidates stretching out the door. Now, many believe the focus on enhanced recruiting efforts is the new normal. Given that, officers I spoke with reject the idea of any sort of lowered standard. They're proud of the way they've been able to streamline the hiring process and target a new generation of highly qualified candidates. Caitlin Burke, CBN News, Baltimore, Maryland. Oh, I'm, I love this story. I love it. it. shows both sides of the debate going on and currently the debate about defund the police. I hope that's been thrown in the ash heap of history. We do not need to defund the police. We need to honor those who are putting their lives on the line, making sure that we have the type of officers that reflect our overall community and stop the internal warfare where somehow or other the police are viewed as the enemy. Uh, that needs to end, but it needs to end on both sides. So hats off to uh, Caitlin for that wonderful story. Uh, I think it really shows the balance and the overall need in our country today.